What's good, YouTube? It's me, Coach 67 Sports TV. Shout out to the awesome and amazing LDBC, Lions Den Boston community. Shout out to the greatest university in the world, the Southern University, home of the mighty Jaguars. This is the day I have been looking for for a long time. Today, except, today is September the 2nd, 2023, and it's the start of Southern University's 2023 football season. I've been anticipating this day for a long time. been looking forward to this day. It is finally here. Southern University plays their first game today against Alabama State. Uh, and I'm just going to give you my take from a Southern University perspective. This channel is for Southern University football fans from a Southern University perspective. So I'm pretty much going to give you my perspective on the game. Uh, first of all, from a coaching perspective, uh, in terms of uh, looking at things from between Coach Dooley and Eddie Robinson Jr., uh, I think whichever team plays better is going to win. But from a coaching standpoint, I know a lot of Southern University fans, they don't have a lot of trust uh, in Coach Dooley. Uh, but I think he's going to get the job done in terms of uh, if, if it's a close game, I think Southern has enough talent to really get Coach Dooley over the hump. And I think he going to be able to handle his own in that regard. Now, in bigger games, you know, we'll see as things kind of, as the season progresses. Now, a lot of people been asking for my take on week zero last week between Jackson State and South Carolina State. Uh, for my take, of course, we talked about it on my brother's channel, Jared Eleven Green. Check out his channel when we uh, talk about SWAC and HBCU football and Southern Baller show, but last week, uh, pretty much Jackson State gave South Carolina State the beat down. You know, I was impressed, but to me, it's too early to tell whether it's whether Jackson State is that good or uh, is South Carolina State. Did they just play that bad? Did they have an off week? Was it a fluke or is it really South Carolina State not that good? So we'll see this week with Jackson State when they play against FAMU. And as a Southern University fan, I'm really anticipating them coming to A.W. Mumford Stadium next Saturday. But for the topic at hand in terms of Southern and Alabama State, uh, first of all, it's going to be interesting to see how Southern University offense looks against Alabama State's defense. You know, over the years, Alabama State has had some good defenses over the years. It's going to be uh, interesting to see uh, how Southern University's offense does against Alabama State's defense led by Colton Adams. Uh, is, Colton Adam, is Colton Adams going to be able to run all over the field, make a lot of plays? Or is Southern University's offense really going to be able to get off and neutralize him and be able to do what they're going to do? Uh, how does Harold Blood perform as Southern University's new starting quarterback? You know, from a Southern University fan perspective, you know, sitting through uh, Ladarius Skelton and even though uh, Glenn and Bobby McDaniel was in the middle and should have been starting last year also. And Bashawn McCray, you know, two of Southern's last three quarterbacks have been kind of glorified running backs. You know, very athletic, but essentially limited from a passing standpoint. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how Southern does with a, with, with a pure pocket passer at the helm. You know, is he going to show progression in his game the same way John Lampley did a few years ago when it was both? Darius Skelton and John Lampley splitting, splitting time at the quarterback position. So hopefully he can make a quantum leap and a jump, uh, you know, from a Harold Blood perspective in terms of uh, a Southern University fan. Is he going to show some progression the way John Lampley did, you know, a few years back? And in addition to that, uh, if he struggles, is Coach Judy going to be quick to give him the hook and go with Noah Barton? Uh, is he going to ride with Harold Blood the same way he did with Bashawn McCray last year. And, you know, as a Southern University fan, I felt like he stuck with Bashawn McCray way, way more than he should have. In the Texas Southern game, I thought he should have got the hook. I thought he should have got the hook the first time they played J State. And definitely going into the SWAT championship game, I thought Glenn above McDaniel should have been the starter. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Now, in terms of Southern University offense as a whole, you know, whether it's Cole Bedillon at running back, uh, Gary Quarles Jr., Kendrick Rhymes, uh, uh, even are we going to see a C.J. Russell sighting? You know, from the running back perspective, you know, how the running back is going to do, but more importantly, the offensive line. You know, 
if you look at Southern University, going all the way back to P. Richardson's first year uh, as the head coach, Southern University has always had good offensive lines. That's why you had so many great running backs at Southern University over the years, whether it's Lindsey Lindsay Scott Sr., uh, Melvin Williams Jr., uh, Leonard Tillery, uh, Steve Warford. Southern University's offense always starts with the halls up front. So Southern University's offensive line is going to have to uh, be effective. Now, Southern University is still deep in the running back position, even though they lost to Roy Sims and Carl Ligon. They still got Kendrick Rhymes And Kobe Dillon probably more than likely he's going to be the starter. Uh, but the thing I'm, I'm going to be interested in is see Gary Quarles Jr. You know, I'm not just saying this so because he did well in uh, the last scrimmage leading up to this game, but of that group of backs, I think he's the game breaker. I think he's the home run hitter. Uh, you know, Kendrick Grimes, he has that same type of potential, even C.J. Russell, uh, because over the years, Southern University has liked these smallish backs, uh, you know, like – you know, Kendrick Rhymes and, and you know, C.J. Russell. There's a lot, they've liked those kind of guys. That's why guys like Steve Wolford and the Artillery have thrived over the years. But I think of that group, I think he's the best back. I think he's the – if he can stay healthy, he's going to be the back to watch this season. You know, I think Corbett Dillon is a good back, but his history has shown that he's injury prone. And, you know, moving to the wide receiver position, it's going to be interesting to see because last year, in my opinion – I thought Cassius Allen and August Petrie III were by far the two best wide receivers, but we really didn't get to see their talents on full display because Bashawn McCray was essentially a running back playing a quarterback position. So it's going to be interesting to see if he could get the ball to Cassius Allen and uh, George Quarles and Chandler Whitfield and, uh, and Jalen Howard and Fuller Dupree. I mean, I'm sorry, Dupree Fuller. It's going to be interesting to see if he could get the ball to all these guys. I mean, Southern... University is loaded at the wide receiver position. Like I said, uh, they haven't had this much depth in years since maybe you look at the year they won the SWAC championship uh, when they had Quincy Richard at the helm and you had, you know, Alfred Arden, Chris Davis, or even going back to the last SWAC championship they won in 2013 when they had uh, Lee Dawes and Willie Quinn and Mike Jones with that group. So this Southern University wide receiving court is loaded. It's going to be interesting to see how Alabama State's secondary affairs against Southern University's offense. Now, going to the defensive side of the ball, you know, I think it all starts up front on the defensive side of the ball. Also, uh, is Kelby Gibbons going to be able to uh, replace Jordan Lewis? Uh, Christian Zachary, he's coming in. You know, is he going to be able to have the same type of impact that Jason Dumas had? Jason Dumas last year, he got a lot of attention. That's what allowed Taj Brown to be as successful as he was in the middle. In addition to that, highest Taj Brown, even though he played middle linebacker at Donaldsonville High School uh, when he was in high school, last year he made all swag, but it was more of a no as a nose guard. How is he going to transition from that position back to defensive end, uh, which he's, he's played most of his career in college? But last year he was most effective at that nose, nose guard position. So, you know, how is that going? How is that going? How is he going to be able to make that transition? And, you know, moving to the next level. Jalen Campbell, you know, is he going to be able to get everybody in the right position? You know, how big an impact is he going to have? You know, is he going to be a Channing Warner, uh, Kenya Ron, Jimmy Connors type linebacker for Southern University? Is he going to be effective? Is he going to be a great leader? So on and so forth. So it's going to be interesting to see, uh, you know, how he does on the next level. And in terms of the secondary, is Jordan Lewis, I'm sorry, is Jordan Carter and Christian Davis, are they going to be able to hold on the secondary? Because looking at, you know, the scrimmage, it seems as if Southern's offense, uh, when they got it going, they pretty much had their way with Southern University secondary. So all those two defensive backs going to be able to hold Southern University secondary down. And, you know, my final prediction for the game, I pretty much think Southern University is going to pull out a close victory. You know, I don't give it like I don't like to give exact scores, but I think it's going to be, you know, maybe Southern win by four points. You know, that type of game, I think it's going to be a close game. I think this game is going to go a long way to show what Southern University is going to be working with this particular season. You know, are they really the team to really beat in the Swag West? Uh, is it, or are they just living off the hype from years past? Uh, I'm looking forward to the game. Of course, I'm going to get my post-game reaction. 
Also, on my brother's channel, Jared Love and Green, we're going to talk about the swag and the MEAC from top to bottom in terms of all the games on the Southern Baller Show tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Today at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, Bayou Sports Talk, episode 19. You know, we're going to break down, you know, some of uh, uh, the reflection from week zero, uh, today's games, the NFL season, and we're also going to talk a little bit of boxing also. Uh, so check out Bayou Sports Talk today at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Also check me and my brother out on his channel, Jared Olam Green, uh, Southern Baller Show, where we talk about HBCU football. Also check out my brother Brent Fox on his channel. And if you're looking for the latest in terms of swag from top to bottom, uh, check out Swag Talk. That's like the best swag, in my opinion, the best swag channel on YouTube. Uh, that's it for this uh, video. If you saw any value in the video, like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. Also click the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime I post any new videos. That's it for this video. See y'all for uh, Bayou Sports Talk later on today. Y'all have a blessing, phenomenal day. Peace and blessings.